in fiber optic communication system uh, we need the anti reflection coding material and the critical angle reflections so we are going to discuss the anti reflection coding material and the importance of the critical angle reflection in the fiber optic communication systems uh, we know that optical fiber is made of gloss and there are two cylinders inside the optical fiber the inner cylinder is known as the core of the fiber and the outer cylinder is known as the clearing of the fiber so there are two cylinders in the fiber the inner cylinder which is known as the core of the fiber and the outer cylinder which is known as the clearing of the fiber we feed <coughs> the light signal to the fiber and we feed this light signal from the fiber from the ear to the fiber so on this side of the fiber we have got ear and here is the fiber so we want to feed the light signal to the fiber there is uh, an interface between the ear and the fiber at the boundary a friction of the energy of uh, the light signal will be reflected back so the signal which is reflected back is represented by r and this is known as a reflected wave and because of this reflected wave some energy of the incident wave is lost this loss is known as reflection loss so we don't want to have this reflection loss you see the remaining energy of the incident wave will be transmitted to the optical fiber so the total energy of the incident wave is not transmitted to the optical fiber because of this reflection phenomena uh, a friction of the energy of the incident wave will be reflected back and this energy will be lost as a reflection loss so we want to eliminate this reflection loss because we don't want this reflection loss we don't want this reflection loss due to reflection phenomena so we want to eliminate this reflection loss you see this uh, reflection loss will be zero this uh, reflection loss will be zero if the reflection coefficient is equal to zero we know that when the reflection coefficient is zero then the percentage of the energy which is reflected back to ear will be zero and you see this uh, a percentage is represented by reflectance reflectance is represented by r so if rho is zero there will be no reflect reflected ray and there will be no reflection loss uh, we discussed the <coughs> reflection of the te light wave so uh, if the reflection of the te light wave is zero then there will be no reflection loss the uh, 100% energy of the light wave will be transmitted to the optical fiber and we discussed 
the condition for this particular equation. You see this row in case of TE mode will be equal to 0 if N1 is equal to N2. Let's say N1 is the refractive index of the air and N2 is the refractive index of the glass, the, the fiber. So under this particular condition, the reflection coefficient of the TE light wave will be equal to 0 and there will be no reflected wave and the total energy of the incident wave will be transmitted to the optical fiber. But this is not possible. Why? Because N1 is the refractive index of the air, which is 1. N2 is the refractive index of the gloss, which is 1.45 or 1.5. So N1 will never be equal to N2. So this is, uh, this is not possible to uh, eliminate the reflected ray in, 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 in case of the TE light wave. Well, we discussed the reflection of the TM mode uh, in the previous classes and if uh, the reflection coefficient of the TM mode is zero, then there will be no reflected wave. The total energy of the wave will be transmitted to the optical fiber. There will be no reflection loss at all. And you see, uh, we discussed uh, the condition for this particular equation as well. This rho will be equal to zero if the angle of incidence is equal to the Brewster angle. And we know that the Brewster angle is equal to tangent inverse N2 by N1. So in this particular mode, we calculate the Brewster angle with the help of this particular equation and the angle of incidence must be equal to the Brewster angle. If the angle of incidence is equal to the Brewster angle, then there will be no uh, reflected ray. Rho will be equal to zero. There will be no reflection loss and the total energy of the incident wave will be transmitted to the optical fiber. So let me consider this scenario. Let's say we have an optical fiber over here which is made of gloss. And this is the normal to the interface uh, between the air and the optical fiber. And we talk about, you see, the angle of the incident ray. So if this angle is equal to theta b, if this angle is equal to the Brewster angle, there will be no reflected ray. The total energy will be transmitted to the optical fiber and there will be no reflection loss. So uh, we can eliminate the reflected ray in case of TE, uh, in case of TM light wave. There is another way to reduce the reflection loss. There is another way to eliminate the reflection loss. So we are going to discuss this uh, new method which is used to eliminate the reflection loss. And uh, basically, uh, we, we use uh, another material which is known as anti-reflection coating material. So let us consider this diagram. Uh, let's say uh, we have got medium number one. The refractive index of medium number one is N1. And this is another medium. And we want to uh, transmit the light ray from N1 to N3. And we want to eliminate the reflected ray. Why? Because there will be reflection loss due to this reflected ray. So uh, we want to feed uh, the light signal from N1 to N3 and here is the boundary between N1 and N3. This is the boundary between N1 and N3. So a fraction of the incident energy will be reflected back. You see the incident ray is represented by I in this particular diagram. The reflected ray is represented by R and the transmitted ray is uh, uh, represented by T. So T indicates the transmitted ray. Uh, we want uh, the total energy of the incident ray to be transmitted to uh, this, uh, this, this particular medium, the medium having uh, a, a refractive index of N3. So in order to 
uh, eliminate this uh, reflected ray uh, we use uh, another material uh, which is known as anti reflection coding material so if we look at this particular diagram you see uh, here is uh, medium number one and we want to uh, feed this uh, light ray into medium number three the refractive index of which is n3 so we use uh, another material over here uh, this material uh, is known as anti-reflection coating material let's say the refractive index of the anti-reflection coating material is n2 and uh, the thickness of this anti-reflection coating material is lambda by 4 where lambda is the wavelength of the signal in the anti-reflection coating material so if you use this uh, anti-reflection uh, coating material there will be no reflected ray you see uh, the reflected ray can be eliminated uh, with the help of this anti-reflection coating material and the total energy of the incident ray will be transmitted to medium number three so the reflection loss will be equal to zero the reflectance will be equal to zero and the reflection coefficient in this particular case will be equal to zero as well so we introduce uh, another medium uh, between n1 and n3 and the refractive index of this uh, medium is represented by n2 so if we introduce uh, this uh, uh, anti reflection coding material uh, where n2 represents the refractive index of this anti reflection coding material and lambda by 4 represents the thickness of this anti reflection coding material then the reflectance will be equal to you you know that uh, reflectance is the ratio of the reflected power to the incident power and if uh, this reflectance is equal to zero it means that pr will be equal to zero it means that there is no reflected ray so uh, if we introduce this uh, anti-reflection coding material between uh, the uh, medium number one and medium number three then we can calculate the reflectance with the help of equation number a in equation number a n1 is the uh, the refractive index of medium number one n3 is the refractive index of medium number three we want to transmit the incident ray from n1 to n3 n2 is the refractive index of the anti-reflection coding material and we can use this particular equation to uh, find out the reflectance and if this reflectance is equal to zero it means that there will be no reflected ray you see this uh, if we look at this particular equation uh, the reflectance will be equal to zero if uh, the numerator of this equation is zero so uh, if the numerator of this equation is equal to zero then the reflectance will be equal to zero there will be no reflected ray the reflection coefficient will be zero there will be no reflection loss at all and uh, uh, if we make uh, the numerator equal to zero uh, let us equate it to zero so you see uh, n2 square uh, if we uh, make it equal to zero then n2 square will be equal to n1 into n3 so uh, the reflectance will be equal to zero uh, the reflectance will be equal to zero the reflection loss in this particular uh, a case will be equal to zero if n2 square is equal to n1 n3 n1 is the reflective uh, the uh, refractive index of medium number one n3 is the refractive index of medium number three we want to feed the signal from n1 to n3 and we want to eliminate the reflection loss in this particular case so if n2 is equal to under root n1 n3 then um, there will be no reflected ray the reflection loss will be equal to zero and luckily uh, this material does not exist so uh, if uh, the material having a refractive index of n2 does not exist then we will choose another material uh, having a refractive index uh, approximately 
uh, equal to n2 if the refractive index is approximately equal to n2 uh, we cannot you see eliminate the reflection loss in that particular case but at least we can minimize it at least we can reduce the reflection loss so let us do uh, the numerical uh, example in this numerical example uh, we will use uh, this particular equation to uh, uh, calculate the percentage of the energy uh, which is reflected back to uh, air which is reflected back to the same medium so uh, uh, keep it in your mind that uh, in the upcoming numerical example we use uh, this particular equation so this is example number 10 in chapter number 3 <clears throat> you see uh, in this particular example n1 is air the refractive index of the air is 1 n3 is gloss the refractive index of the gloss is 1.5 so basically we want to feed the light signal from the air to the gloss and we want to eliminate the reflection loss so we can eliminate the reflection loss if we introduce an uh, anti-reflection coating material the refractive index of the anti-reflection coating material will be equal to under root n1 n3 so n1 in this particular case is 1 n3 in this particular case is 1.5 so the refractive index of the material must be equal to 1.225 so if we uh, use uh, this material as uh, anti-reflection coding material then the reflectance loss will be equal to zero so uh, let us calculate uh, the reflectance in this particular case we can calculate the reflectance with the help of you see this particular equation we have n1 n3 over here you see n1 into n3 will be equal to 1 into 1.5 which will be equal to 1.5 and we have n2 square over here so we have 1.5 minus 1.225 square whole square divided by 1.5 plus 1.225 square whole square and you see uh, the reflection loss is zero no fr uh, no energy of the incident wave is reflected back in this particular case so unluckily we don't find a material of this much refractive index so what we do uh, in this particular case uh, we use another material uh, we use uh, magnesium fluoride as uh, an anti reflection coating material why because the uh, refractive index of the magnesium fluoride is 1.38 which is uh, uh, close to 1.225 so let us use this material as an anti uh, reflection coating material and let us find out you see the reflection loss in this particular case so uh, we use uh, uh, this particular material as an uh, anti reflection coating material and we calculate the reflectance that is the reflection loss so you see here we have n1 into n3 uh, n1 is 1 n3 is 1.5 so the product of these two gives you 1.5 here is n2 square n2 is 1.38 divided by n1 n3 plus n2 square so if we put the values uh, in this particular equation and uh, if we calculate r r turns out to be 0 0.014 if we multiply this one by 100 uh, we get 1.4 percent so 1.4 percent of the incident energy is reflected back and you see the remaining energy is tra transmitted to medium number three so you see uh, we have reduced the reflection loss uh, the reflection loss is 1.4 percent only so at least you guys can reduce the reflection loss with the help of this anti-reflection coding material now we talk about another uh, important uh, uh, topic that is known as the critical angle reflection so uh, you see uh, let's say uh, here is the core of the optical fiber so here is the core of the optical fiber and the refractive uh, index of the core of the optical fiber is represented by n1 so this is the inner cylinder of the uh, optical fiber there are two cylinders in an optical fiber the inner cylinder 
which is known as core of the fiber. The refractive index of the core is N1. And there is an outer cylinder, uh, which is known as clearing. And the refractive index of this uh, outer cylinder is N2. And the light ray travels from the transmitter uh, to, towards the receiver in the core of uh, the uh, fiber. So uh, we need to save the light ray uh, in, in uh, the core of uh, the optical fiber. If the light ray travels in the core of the optical fiber, then uh, the losses inside the, the, the fiber will be uh, negligible. So uh, you see, uh, in this particular case, uh, you see uh, here is uh, the reflected ray, here is the incident ray. You see the ray uh, moves in this particular direction and we want to have a total internal reflection over here. The, the total energy of this incident ray uh, should be reflected back to the same medium and uh, similarly the total energy of this ray should be uh, reflected back to the same medium. This uh, condition is known as uh, the total internal reflection. So if we satisfy the condition for the total internal reflection then this ray will travel inside the core of the optical fiber and the loss uh, in the optical fiber will almost be negligible. So we want to save the light energy uh, we, we want to save the light energy inside the core of the optical fiber. The light signal should travel inside the core of uh, the fiber from the transmitter to the receiver. If it travels inside the core of the fiber then the, then the losses inside the core will be zero. The losses inside the fiber will be approximately equal to zero. And uh, you see uh, we talk about uh, this particular uh, uh, angle. This is the normal uh, between uh, this medium and this medium. And you see uh, we talk about this particular angle which is theta. So uh, this uh, uh, angle should be equal to or greater than theta c where theta c is known as the critical angle and it should be less than or equal to 90 degree. So the ray will travel The light ray will travel in the core of the fiber uh, if we uh, satisfy the condition for uh, total internal reflection. This total internal reflection is represented by TIR, the condition for the total internal reflection. And here is the condition for the total internal reflection. You see this angle must be equal to or greater than theta c or it must be equal to or less than 90 degree. So if this angle justifies this condition then the condition for the total internal reflection is satisfied and the light ray will travel inside the core of the fiber. The loss um, in the fiber will uh, be almost a negligible loss. So theta c is known as the critical angle. So if the angle is equal to the critical angle or if this angle is greater than the critical angle then the total internal reflection will take place. Similarly if this angle is equal to uh, the critical angle or if it is greater than the critical angle then the total internal reflection will take place. So how to calculate the critical angle? So you see uh, the total uh, internal reflection will take place if the reflection coefficient is equal to 1. If the reflection coefficient is equal to 1 then 100% of the energy of the incident ray will be reflected back to the core. Uh, there will be no transmission to the clearing. Uh, no energy of the incident ray will be transmitted to the clearing of the fiber. And we don't want any energy of the uh, light signal to move towards the clearing because if uh, some energy travels towards the so if the reflection coefficient is equal to 1 
the total internal reflection will take place and the light ray will travel in the core of the fiber. The, the, the losses in this particular case will be negligible. The losses will be equal to zero. Similarly, you guys can consider the uh, reflection coefficient of the TA mode as well and the total internal reflection will take place if the absolute value of rho in case of TM light wave is equal to 1. And if you look at the equation for the TE light wave or the equation for the TM light wave, this rho will be equal to 1 if you, you see if this term is equal to 0. Uh, if this term is equal to 0. You see if this term is equal to 0 then uh, rho will be equal to uh, rho will be equal to 1. Why? Because n1 cos theta i by n1 cos theta i will result in 1. So if the second term in the numerator is equal to 0 then uh, the reflection coefficient will be equal to 1. The total internal reflection will take place inside the core of the fiber. Similar, uh, similarly, uh, if this term uh, if this term in the reflection coefficient of the TM light wave is equal to 0, then the reflection coefficient for the TM light wave will also be equal to 1. So this, this is the condition for uh, the TE light wave as well as TM light wave. So you see, uh, this rho will be equal to 1 if uh, this term is equal to 0. So let us equate the second term of, you see, the numerator to 0. Uh, similarly, you see, we consider the reflection coefficient for the TM mode. You see, the absolute value of the reflection coefficient will be equal to 1 uh, if this term is equal to 0. So this is the same term. If this term is equal to 0, then we will have minus n2 square cos theta i by n2 square cos theta i. Why? Because this term will be equal to 0 and this term will be equal to 0 and the absolute value of rho uh, will be equal to 1. So in, in any case, uh, if uh, this term, this quantity is equal to 0, then the reflection coefficient will be equal to 1 and the total internal reflection will take place. So let us equate this term to uh, 0. So, uh, and if rho is equal to 1, uh, then this uh, angle theta will be known as the critical angle because uh, when rho is equal to 1, 100% of the energy of uh, the incident ray will be reflected back to the same medium. So let us calculate uh, this uh, theta c. So the absolute value of rho will be equal to 1 if this term is equal to 0, if under root n2 square minus n1 square sine square theta i is equal to 0. So let us uh, simplify this equation. Uh, n2 square minus n1 square sine square theta i is equal to 0. This means that n1 square sine square theta i is equal to n2 square So n1 sine theta i is equal to n2, sine theta i will be equal to n2 by n1 and uh, this angle, this angle is known as the critical angle. So we can calculate the critical angle with the help of this particular equation. The critical angle sine of theta c will be equal to n2 by n1. Theta c the critical angle can be calculated with the help of equation number 1. The critical angle will be equal to sine inverse n2 by n1. So we can calculate the critical angle with the help of equation number 1. We know that uh, sine of theta is equal to and greater than 0 and is equal to and less than 1. So sine of theta c uh, will be equal to or greater than 0 or less than and equal to 1. We know that sine of theta c is n2 by n1. So n2 by n1 will be uh, equal to 0 or greater than 0 it will be equal to 1 or less than 1. So if we simplify this relationship, we get this particular relationship 
this shows that n2 should be greater than 0 and should be less than n1. n1 is the refractive uh, index of uh, the uh, core of the optical fiber, n2 is the refractive index of the cladding. So n2 should be less than n1. So the refractive index of the core is greater than the refractive index of the cladding. So for the total internal reflection, n2 is less than n1. This is another condition for the total internal reflection. Well, uh, you see, uh, let us consider this particular term and uh, let us put, uh, let us replace theta i by theta c in this particular quantity. So uh, we replace uh, sine square theta i uh, by sine square theta. and we know that sine theta c is basically equal to n2 by n1. So if we replace this sine square theta i by sine square theta c and then if we put the value of sine square theta c over here which is uh, n2 square by n1 square so you see uh, this term will be equal to 0 under this particular condition if theta i is equal to theta c then uh, definitely uh, the this term will be equal to 0 and if this term is equal to 0 then the reflection coefficient will be equal to 1 and if the reflection coefficient energy will be reflected back to the core no energy will move towards the clearing. Well, uh, uh, if theta i is greater than theta c, then sine of theta i will be greater than sine of theta c. And n1 square sine square theta i will be greater than n2 square. And if it is greater than n2 square, then you see uh, this term will be an imaginary term. If this is an imaginary term, then rho will be equal to a minus jb divided by a plus jb. The reflection coefficient will be a complex quantity. And if the reflection coefficient is a complex quantity, then the magnitude of rho will be equal to 1. And uh, if the magnitude of rho is equal to 1, then the total internal reflection will take place. So you see, uh, the magnitude of uh, uh, rho will be equal to the magnitude of this complex quantity divided by the magnitude of this complex quantity. The magnitude of uh, the complex quantity in the numerator is under root a square plus b square. The magnitude of the uh, complex quantity in the denominator is under root a square plus b square. So we get rho is equal to 1. So it means that rho is, uh, rho is equal to 1 if theta is equal to uh, theta c or if it is greater than theta c. So under this particular condition, rho will be equal to 1. Uh, the total internal reflection will take place in this particular case. So thank you so much. Uh, this is the end of chapter number 3.